Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Downey and today we're going to be talking about this myth around Indian bodybuilding genetics. In particular, there's this common misperception of Indian bodybuilding genetics that they have worse genetics than other races and it's quite commonly perpetuated on bodybuilding forums and things like that. However, I would argue that Indians have some of the better genetics because they have more aesthetically pleasing physiques, they have smaller waists and better overall frames than most guys do, but they tend to be ignored because of this confirmation bias. They're ignored on social media and things like that because they're assumed to have poorer genetics than most people. And I think a lot of these opinions stem from confirmation bias, as well as the whole martial race theory. However, they sometimes support their ideas with science, and I'll take a look into that and see whether or not science agrees with them. So just to get my personal anecdote out of the way, I live in South Africa where we have quite a large population of Indian descendants, and I think Every person I know that is of Indian descent is quite jacked. I can't think of many who aren't jacked. A lot of them train arms specifically, but they're still jacked nonetheless. Even when I was walking around in the mall today, I realized that most of the Indian guys in the mall are quite jacked. However, that is in South Africa and isn't representative of the whole Indian community. So obviously, your perception does play a role on whether or not you think a certain race group has better or worse genetics. But this is purely anecdotal. Let's just take a look back in time. I'm sure many of you have come across this post. I think Eric Helms posted it on his Instagram, but it's quite a good example of how much nonsense there is out there about Indian genetics. If we go back into the 1930s, you can clearly see that well, this is a time that steroids were assumed not to be a major factor in bodybuilding, and you can see they all have physiques that even people on steroids would want nowadays. And if you compare this to the bodybuilders or white bodybuilders back in that era, they're more or less the same. I'd argue that these physiques are a lot more aesthetic than the, aesthetic than the white bodybuilders. Even in the Indian fitness community, there is a division amongst individuals about which part or which Indian individuals have the best genetics. And a lot of the time, people say that the Punjabi individuals have the best genetics. And this is kind of something that stems from the whole martial race, which was used back in the days of colonialism by the British to essentially promote this idea that certain races or tribes were stronger or better built for fighting than the other non-martial races. So a lot of individuals use this to support the claim that Punjabi individuals are, have better genetics than the rest of India. However, what they fail to mention is that these racial groups that were classed as the martial race were generally seen as less intelligent and less educated and not and probably easy to control. Obviously this mentality is colonial and racist and definitely not true and this myth has been disproven quite a while ago. However to this day it still seems a bit ingrained. And a lot of Punjabi men tend to use this argument to say that their genetics are better than other Indian men. Which, let's say, is the case, then they'd have to concede that because of this whole martial race theory that they are less educated and more easily controlled, which is nonsense, and everyone knows it's nonsense, but they're willing to say that's nonsense, but not the fact that perhaps them being deemed as stronger is also a bit of nonsense. But I intend no hate towards anyone, I just think it's best if we don't put others down. But anyway, with that out of the way, let's get into the evidence. So it would be ignorant of me to ignore all of the studies about Southern Asians, which is a term commonly used for people from India, Sri Lanka, and things like that. Um, and it'd be ignorant of me not to mention that these race racial groups tend to have higher incidence of type 2 diabetes and a lot of this is attributed to the fact that they more uh, more easily store body fat 
but there's more to this than meets the eye. So the first study I'm going to show you is this body size, body composition, and fat distribution amongst European, Maori, Pacific Islanders, and, South and Asian Indian individuals or adults. And this is a study that is always referenced um, either by people on forums and even in other studies where they claim that uh, South Asians have higher risk of type 2 diabetes because they have lean body mass. And that's essentially what was stated in the study, that the South Asian men had lower lean body mass than other racial groups, which would mean that they had lower muscle mass. However, there were many issues with this study. First of all, it was performed in New Zealand, and secondly, it was on South Asian immigrants in New Zealand and about 200 of them. Of more importance though, dietary hab uh, habits as well as exercise and training regimes was not delved into. The only thing they corrected for was age. But you'll see this pop up quite commonly in all of these studies about South Asians with low body mass or higher incidence of type 2 diabetes. You'll see that most of these studies are in European countries where they take South Asian people in that country and use them to represent the whole of South Asia. I've seen others also mention this where they looked at the ancient origins of low lean mass in South Asians and its implications for modern type 2 diabetes. I mean this study was quite poor in many ways and a lot of it was based off of assumption. They essentially looked at remains of humans from 11,000 years ago and drew conclusions from that, looking at their bone breadth and things like that to determine lean muscle mass, which has been shown not to be accurate at all. Another study commonly shown is that if you look at this study, neonates or babies just born um, seem to have this thin fat phenotype um, if they are born to Indian mothers and they're smaller. First of all, this study was conducted in the UK, not in South Asia, and it did not correct for confounding variables, such as the fact that the mothers that they had in the trial for the South Asians were indeed younger and smaller. Both of these are risk factors for having smaller children. But this problem that is shown in all of these studies is not new and is known to the, to the research community. There was, a study po uh, there was a study published in the United States that stated there are challenges because it is known there are challenges when recruiting South Asians because they know that the groups that they choose are not representative of the whole population. Furthermore, I found this study about diabetes in South Asians, and they looked more in depth. They actually controlled for certain variables, which none of the other studies did because they were all observational studies. In this study, they actually controlled for diet and things, and they found that the reason that South Asians in these European countries probably have these bad or poor phenotypes is that they seem to adapt adversely to the Western diet. What this means is that white individuals or European individuals have been acclimatized to these Western diets, although not particularly, but these South Asians are not acclimatized to this diet in any sense, and that's why it has these worse outcomes on them. So perhaps it might be of interest for future studies to include South Asians from South Asia and not South Asians from European countries. But we also have studies like this in African individuals, especially in African men. They found that when African men were put on a Western diet, their testosterone levels plummeted as well as their lean mass, and they gained a lot of visceral body fat, which added to their body fat percentage and predisposed them to type 2 diabetes. So perhaps dietary habits should be included in these studies. But let's look at studies where we can actually control what our participants are doing. So in this study, where they looked at Caucasian and South Asian men, 
and they looked at how they responded to resistance training and dieting over a six-week interval. And the results showed that they performed exactly the same. The only difference was that after exercise, the South Asian men's had a bit of a more prolonged inflammatory response, but that never reached significance. And overall, it was like they were comparing two identical races. Furthermore, in this study, which was a bit smaller, but again looked at muscle protein synthesis and the metabolic response to things like resistance training, they also found that the results were more or less similar. However, diet wasn't controlled in this study, making it not as valuable as the previous study. What they did find is that some of the Indian men had higher body fat percentage and perhaps a not as much upper body strength. But again, the diet wasn't controlled in these, in this study in particular, and the study previous to this showed that muscle strength was identical. So what can we take from all of this? Well, it seems that a lot of data that we have on South Asians is from South Asians in European or Western countries, where they're on these Western diets, which, is, which have been shown not to suit them. And uh, this Perhaps mean that it perhaps means that diet is quite important in these circumstances, and it's not only your genes. So again, just to reiterate, when diet is controlled for and training stimulus is the same, the results are more or less identical. And let's assume that South Asian individuals are more predisposed to holding fat and have lower lean mass. Firstly, it's not difficult to get rid of fat, all you have to do is possibly diet harder and keep your diet cleaner, but as we displayed from these studies, a Western diet is probably not optimal for you if you are South Asian. Furthermore, if your lean mass is low at baseline, these, res these studies show that once you start training and you have the correct stimulus, you will grow the same as any other race group. So in conclusion, this notion that Indians have worse genetics than other racial groups is not true. There isn't much data to suggest this, and the data that there is is poor in quality, and I don't think you should let this discourage you. If you work out hard enough, if you diet properly, you will achieve the results you want. So thank you for watching this video, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next